What's up, everybody? I'd like to welcome you to another Juice tutorial. And today what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit more about the text button class. So when I was doing my last tutorial where I was in the traction engine creating a very simple transport, I kind of glazed over one of the classes that I hadn't mentioned before, which is this class called text button, which is where we're allowed to put a button on the screen and then it just has a bit of text on it and you could click on it click on it again and it'll change states or do whatever you command it to do so we haven't really talked about that and I thought that uh, because of a live stream that I did the other day I learned a little something and I thought I'd share it with you uh, so what we have is at the moment we have what I did in the last tutorial which was that we have two buttons one button when I hit play it consoles out uh, a, a timer uh, down to the console and when I hit stop it just stops it so now what I wanted to do is what if I wanted to create the functionality of both of these buttons into one button well how would I do that uh, that could be a little bit of a challenge but I'm going to show you how we can do that so first thing that we're going to do is we're going to get rid of one of our buttons so I'm going to get rid of the play button and while I'm here I'm just going to tell you a little bit about what I've done, just briefly go over this again. So I have uh, a, an enum class called a play state where I have two states where I'm saying, okay, uh, the transport could be playing or it could be stopped. Okay. Uh, I've set the initial state to stop. And then, uh, and then what I could do is I can use this enum to define certain things that I want to have uh, happen when, the, uh, when we're in a play state. Okay, so like the transport playing, so on and so forth. So now I'm just going to go over here. I'm going to get rid of all this play button functionality because we don't have that anymore. And I'm just going to get rid of that. So now just going briefly over this code. So I've got uh, a button and then what I've done is I've set a toggle state to true so you think of a button that you can turn on or off so true is you can associate with on so to speak and uh, then what I've done below here is I've done what's called a lambda function and I'll put a link to lambda functions um, uh, below uh, because it's a, a very deep subject but this is just kind of a simple way of just saying hey when the button is clicked I want it to execute this stop function. And down here, I've written two functions called play and stop. So what I'm saying is that if the play state is in play, then I want it to be in stop. Then I want the transport to stop and I want the timer to stop. And conversely, if the play state is in stop and then I hit, then I click the button, I want it to play. And then it's saying if it's stopped, then play it, start the timer, start the transport. And then when uh, when I start the timer, I'm just consoling out the transport position. Okay, so pretty simple. And now what we're going to do is we need to put the functionality of uh, both play and stop into one button. So when we hit it once, it stops, and then we hit it again, and it plays. Okay, so... I'll just show you what I have at the moment. So I have one button that says stop. Okay, when I click it, it doesn't do anything. So let's go ahead and just change this up. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to inherit uh, what's called a button listener, uh, the button listener class. And I've got that here. And then this is just on the Juice API. So we have this class called button listener. It says use to receive callbacks when a button is clicked. Okay, so... As we can see, there's a pure virtual function here, and we know that it's pure virtual function because it has this little equals zero at the end, which means that whenever we're calling or inheriting from this class, that we need to call this function in order for everything to work correctly or else the program won't build. Okay, so whenever you see this equals zero, that means you have to implement it in, a, in, in order for it to work. Okay, so, so what we can do is we can do our in inheriting. So we'll do it like this, public button listener, like so. 
And then down here, I will do void button clicked. Then it's a pointer to a button. And then I'm going to mark it override. And the reason I'm doing it, uh, that I'm marking it override is because it's a pure virtual function. So it's a function I need to implement whenever I'm calling button listener. But if somebody else were reading it and I didn't, if we're reading this code and I didn't have it marked override, then the user may misread that as uh, button clicked being a function that I have just kind of made up myself and wasn't a pure virtual function. So override just lets the, the reader know that, hey, I'm implementing a pure virtual function from one of these classes that I'm inheriting. Okay. So now what we could do is we need to, we need to do, so we've done the declaration of button clicked, but now we just need to put it here in our implementation in our CPP file. So we got button, button, like that. Okay. And then one very important thing that is very easy to overlook when we're, when we're doing a button listener is we need to add it. We need to add the button as a listener. Okay. So, so we need to say, uh, stop button, add listener. And then the listener is just this component. Okay. So that's, so that's what that means. So now we're just going to compile and we can see that the build has succeeded. Okay. So still not doing anything. So now let's go down to our button clicked and let's add some functionality. So what we need to do is we need to say, Hey, if the button that is clicked is the stop button, right? So if button, Okay, I'm just getting that from here. So this is a pointer to a button. Okay, is equal to. Now this, when I was doing a live stream the other day, and this actually had me kind of, uh, kind of flustered for a second because I didn't I didn't actually write this correctly. But what we need to do is if the button is the address of stop button, right? because the button is a pointer to a button. So it's a pointer to a space of memory. Okay. Uh, and then that space, what we're saying is if that space of memory is the stop button, when this button is clicked, now I want it to do something. Okay. So had me a little bit, had me a little bit just kind of confused there for a second, but uh, I finally, I finally got it. So now we just want to define, okay, if it's in a, in a stopped state, then we want it to play. If it's in a play state, we want it to stop. Okay, so if play state is equal to play state stop. And then I can say play. Right. And if I do that, there's no sense in having that conditional in there because that would already have to be true. Okay. So now I'm just going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip the toggle state. Right. So what will happen is that oh, I'm just going to correct my formatting here just by doing this. Okay. And then I'm going to say, uh, stop button, set toggle state false, right? Cause when it's playing, when it's stopped is true. When it's playing is false. Okay. I hope this doesn't confuse, confuse you. Uh, notification type. Don't send notification. And I'm just going to do the opposite here for, for if I'm in a stopped in a playing state and then I stop. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get rid of this. 
because what I'm going to do is I'm going to then do that here. So I'm going to do else if play state is equal to play state play, then stop. So pretty simple. If it's stopped, then play. If it's playing, then stop. Okay. And then when I play, I'm putting the play state in play, right? When I'm stopping, I'm putting the play state in stop. Okay, so let's see what happens there if that actually works. I have my suspicions that it's not gonna work because I've just remembered something else I need to implement. So if I hit play, see nothing's happening, okay? And the reason is because when when it's in a stopped when it's in a stop state what i want what i want to happen is i need to define what happens when i when i actually click it right so what i need to do is i need to modify this a bit so i need to say stop button on click equals and then i'm just going to use my lambda function here okay so i'm referring to this button and then what I'm saying is if the button's clicked, if it's in a stop state and I click the button, then I want it to play, right? And then same thing here. So we got stop button on click equals this button. And then I'm going to say stop. Okay, so now let's see if that works. Okay, it's building. Looks like everything works all right. So if this works properly, we should see this console out. So there we go. So now we see that it is consoling out and it's in a play state. Then I click it again and now it's in a stop state. So that's cool. Uh, but there's a problem and the problem is that this always says stop and there's nothing here that really lets the user know what's going on, whether it's playing, whether it's stopping, can we make that a little bit better? Okay, so now what we can do is we can actually go back here and I can say, we can actually do some stuff to the stop button itself. So we say stop button, uh, we can say set color. And then if, then we come to this and we say, okay, well, what does that actually mean? So we could go back to our API here and we could do text button. Or not text button, text button. So here we are. And then we can say, okay, so what this means is we have these different states. So we got button color ID, button color on ID. So this must be button color off ID, right? So I can say, because the button is gonna be off, I'm just, I'm just gonna put it below this, this line because it's setting the button to off. And now I can do button color, oh, did I do this right? Uh, so this needs to be text button color ID. Do I, can I just do color IDs? No, it needs to be text button. Okay, because we're in the text button class. So so basically we want to go into this class, then we want to go into this enum, right? So we go text button, so we're saying text button class into the color IDs enum. IDs button color ID. So we're talking about when the button is off. Okay, and then I can say colors, and then I can say something like lime green, right? And then what I could do as well is I could say stop button, set text, set and button text, and I could say playing to let the user know, right? 
Now, what we could do is we could do the same thing for, let me just correct my formatting again. So I could say stop button, set color, and then this would be text button, color IDs, button color ID. So this is button color on button on color ID. And then this would be colors red. So I think that I can actually just take those the set color the set color and oh I'm gonna stop this for a second. Going back, I'm gonna set the button text as well. Stop button set button text and then stopped okay so so now what I want to do is I'm going to actually take this I think that if I take this I can actually just move this up to my constructor because I don't need to declare it again and again do I so I could just do this and then I could do this because I just need to tell it what I wanted to do when the color is on or off once, I believe. So let's just try that. Let's see if this works. Okay, so it's compiling, it's thinking. So it should come up. So it's saying stop rather than stopped because my my in my initialization I've put stop rather than stop. So let's see. Now it's saying playing, it's playing on the transport, then it's gonna say stopped, then playing, it's playing again, and stopped. So that is working correctly. Okay? So now I can just go back here and rather than having stop, I can put stopped here. I can just recompile it just to show you that it actually works. So here we go, we're linking. And there we go. So the button is stopped, and now I'm playing, and it stopped, playing, stopped. So as you can see, that's both of the functions uh, integrated into one button rather than needing two separate buttons. So I hope that that taught you a little bit about um, the button listener class and using that to manage callbacks. Uh, when you actually click the button and that's where I'm going to end this tutorial and I uh, I hope you liked the tutorial and be sure to give it a thumbs up if you liked it and I will see you next time